You see, I had disclosures in my talk, so. <laughs> <laughs> a few. Yep. Yeah. Can you go back? No? Okay. Well, uh, we had the first uh, international consensus conference on duty and switch, and we're starting a series of those. Uh, this was last year in Quebec City, and my announcement would be uh, that we have another one in Niagara Falls, May 1820. Uh, for those of you who want to come to this one, this is the second international conference on duty and switch, um, and you have the, uh, the website. So, sleeve gastrectomy actually was really presented at SAGES in 2002. So that's 15 years ago. For those of you who remember this presentation, and it was presented as a two-stage procedure. And this is what people forget, is that sleeve gastrectomy is part of a train where it has a locomotive, but it has wagons, and you can use it to treat a chronic disease in a stepwise fashion. And if you have forgotten this, then you think that you can treat a chronic disease with one operation and be done forever. And that is the wrong concept. <clears throat> it's, it's a relatively easy concept, you know, the first stage of a duodenal switch where you put a bougie and you perform a sleeve gastrectomy. And one of our fellow uh, who's at NYU, Dr. Parik, did a, uh, um, a systematic review on the resolution of type 2 diabetes with uh, different operations. And you can see in percentage is that when you increase the complexity, up to uh, BPD or DS and SGIP, sleeve gastrectomy with ileal transposition, you can get very high resolution of type 2 diabetes. This is, uh, uh, again, uh, recently from the group of Cleveland Clinic, a uh, retrospective review and meta, uh, meta review of sleeve gastrectomy and type 2 diabetes. And compared to gastric bypass, it had demonstrated uh, that the current evidence that sleeve gastrectomy had similar remission of uh, Renoir gastric bypass. And of course, the SM BOSS, which is the Swiss study, was, run, was a randomized study at three years. Dr. Cohen uh, quoted this. There was at three years no statistical difference in weight loss, and there was no statistical difference in resolution of type 2 diabetes. He failed to comment, to comment and say this. Um, we are well aware of the shower study in the New England Journal of Medicine, this randomized study of, of surgery versus past medical treatment. And at one year, uh, if you see the uh, change in, in hemoglobin A1C, as well as uh, here the medication, there was really no difference between the two operations and uh, uh, between themselves. Now, in the same paper, there was this paper at two years in the same issue on uh, the comparison of best medical treatment and surgery, but surgery had gastric bypass and BPD. And those were at two years, not at one year with shower. And uh, really, um, I'm not going to get into the details of that, but the BPD resulted in better glucose control than gastric bypass, and this was statistically significant. Now, we have five-year follow-up of that study. And five year was published in Lancet two years ago, was that the complete remission was 63% in BPD group versus 37% in gastric bypass. Almost twice as much, almost twice as much at five years. There was the randomized study of bypass versus duodenal switch uh, in the Scandinavian group. And again, better weight loss with DS uh, than gastric bypass and better glucose control in the duodenal switch. Uh, I criticized this because they, they were in their early phase of duodenal switch, so they were more nutritional complication because they went through the learning curve of the operation. This is our own uh, data of nine years follow-up of duodenal switch, and we presented the, this at the Obesity Week, and it got published just a few months ago. And you can see here that diabetes went from 58% at the beginning to 0% at year 7 and 0% at year 9. You know, the, there's flat line of weight loss, 78% uh, at 9 years. Diabetes incidence is 0 at year 7 and 8. 
and this lipidemia is 2% at nine years. And so the, the group of Quebec City presented their long-term data of weight loss at 20 years, and it's a flat line, okay? They also published at 15 years their resolution of type 2 diabetes, and you can see it's 92% resolution of diabetes at 15 years. The STAMPI trial, I've, I've done criticism because I'm not sure it's well randomized, and I'll tell you why. <clears throat> because there's twice female patients in the sleeve group as it in the gastric bypass. It's 44% in gastric bypass and 84% female in sleeve gastrectomy. So that <clears throat> causes trouble because the fat distribution is not the same in the two groups. <clears throat> there was no difference in diabetes at two years, and they just published in New England Journal of Medicine their result last month at five years. <clears throat> and <clears throat> what you see is in the hemoglobin A1C, there's no difference between the two operations compared to the medical group. There's slight difference in the body mass index, <coughs> index between sleeve and, and uh, gastric bypass. That was a small difference. But when you look at glycolated hemoglobin, according to body mass index, there's no difference between sleeve gastrectomy and uh, gastric bypass. And this is coming from the Cleveland Clinic group. So uh, uh, there were more adverse events in the gastric bypass group, and they conclude that they really cannot tell the difference between the two. two the two are really recommended. Uh, they've been, there were studies done in uh, looking at, uh, sorry, I have, um, looking at this Chinese study at five years, long-term results uh, in this specific Chinese Asian population, they had 78% diabetes resolution at five years with sleeve gastrectomy. In this trial looking at hormones and HOMA, <laughs> there was no difference between bypass and sleeve gastrectomy. Looking at the hormones profile, sleeve gastrectomy creates changes in hormones, and that is very important without uh, exclusion of the duodenum. <clears throat> we have this interesting study, randomized, in Chinese type 2 diabetes, comparing sleeve gastrectomy and Roux-en-Y gastric bypass. 64 patients were randomized with uh, hemoglobin A1C more than 7. <clears throat> and you can see here that the outcome at three, 36 months, there's no difference, no difference in hemoglobin A1C. Hemoglobin A1C, identical curves. Fasting blood glucose, identical curves. <clears throat> and you can look into the detail of this paper. This is the percentage of excess weight loss and use of medication. Conclusion, they found no difference between the two operations. But people say at 10 years, it will be bad. It will be bad. What will be bad? I'm going to show you that gastric bypass can be bad at 10 years. <clears throat> this is the DIA-REM uh, score. And you can see, depending on your score, the 2- and 10-year resolution of type 2 diabetes can go from 100% to 20%. It depends on your score. This is the 10-year data on <coughs> urinary Y gastric bypass from Bruce Shermer's uh, group published in the Isles of Surgery. Uh, you can see here that uh, type 2 diabetes resolution at 10 years was 57%, not 80%. And the percentage of ex excess body mass index at 10 years was 52%. 52%. Now, if you look at uh, Jacques Impen's data at 11 years, the sleeve gastrectomy gave 62.5% of excess body mass index at 11 years. This is better than the 10-year data of Bruce Shermer. You have to remember that Roux-en-Y gastric bypass at 10 years is not that great, not that great of an operation. And type 2 diabetes recurs. In this study of 4,400 type 2 diabetes who had gastric bypass, there were 35% who redeveloped diabetes within five years. What are you going to do when it fails? Are you going to transform bypass into something else? 
We don't know what to do when it fails or when type 2 diabetes comes back. You're stuck. The patient is stuck. And what about the complication of gastric bypass? Bowel obstruction, biliary complications, can't reach the biliary tree, hypoglycemia syndromes, recurrent ulcers, <laughs> dumping and post roux syndromes, micronutrient deficiencies, patients need iron infusions, or they have secondary hyperparathyroidism or complex uh, uh, calcium problems and bone demonization. So, you know, this is forgotten in the equation when we look at long-term gastric bypass. Ideal operation, I think it should be easy to perform with low morbidity. I would think that sleeve gastrectomy should be done first, and if it, there's no resolution or it comes back, we have a plan B. We can do the duodenal switch and its variants. Don't forget the variants. They're coming up and they're gonna be very useful, like SADIA operation, the single anastomosis. The single anastomosis gives a resolution of type 2 diabetes in the 93-96%. And you can do it as a second step after sleeve gastrectomy. When you do it as a second step, there's 88% of resolution of diabetes. And these are all individual patients with weight loss. What about the SIPS? SIPS is SADI at 300 centimeter. And it's done in the United States. It's done under trials. <clears throat> and um, they've started to publish their patients. Comparing to DS, they have similar weight loss. And they have 0% of patients on insulin after two years. There's the SASI bypass, single anastomosis sleeve ileal bypass. This has 100% diabetes resolution at one year. So you add the... 250 centimeter on the entrum instead of the duodenum on the sleeve. What about the duodenal jejunal bypass, which is added to the sleeve? This is more popular in Asia, and this is paper is combined data from Japan, Tokyo, and Taiwan, and it has, interestingly compared to bypass, similar hemoglobin A1C uh, uh, several uh, years down the road. And of course, there are the people in Turkey and uh, Brazil who do ileal interposition uh, that you can add to a sleeve gastrectomy. So you have many options. In this, in this study, this, the diverted one gives 81% of resolution of type 2 diabetes. And I think because we have a pool of 350 million, doing gastric bypass complicated one where you're stuck when the, bi when the type 2 diabetes comes back is, in my opinion, <laughs> not the right solution. But it should be the first choice operation. We're going to avoid intestinal surgery on a large number of patients. Thank you very much.